Hey guys, so in today's video, I just wanted to talk about uh, rheumatoid arthritis remission. So what it is and how you can know whether or not that is what you are experiencing or not. So in a nutshell, there actually are a multitude of uh, definitions out there and criteria that uh, rheumatologists can use to determine remission. Um, and it's also one of those things where like remission means different things to different people and different patients. So I'll give you an example. So um, in this article that I read on the Arthritis Foundation, the definition criteria that they listed that scientists use when they're conducting clinical trials um, are ones where you could be in remission and have those and meet those criteria and you could not be in remission and have those criteria. So I'll read what those are and explain why it doesn't automatically mean you're in remission. Um, so the first point is one or few swollen joints, one or fewer swollen joints. And you can have one or, I don't know how you have fewer than one swollen joints, but you can have like improvement in maybe some joints, but still have a very active rheumatoid arthritis going on. You see what I'm saying? So like it's a criteria for it, remission, but it doesn't automatically mean because you're experiencing that criteria that you're automatically in remission. Um, so another one um, is one or fewer tender joints. Again, depending on the person, that improvement could be uh, a reflection of remission, or it could be a reflection of I was in a flare and that flare improved, but I still have active disease. You know what I'm saying? Um, the next one is an assessment by the patient that on a zero to 10 scale, arthritis activity is one or less. That one I could see being pointing to it more, but all these four points that I'm listing, I'm about to go to the fourth one in a minute. Like that's all like just one, uh, criteria or one way that um, remission could be defined for rheumatoid arthritis. And um, there are a couple more I'm gonna go into. And then the fourth one for this like first way of them looking at it is a blood test showing little or no inflammation in levels of C-reactive protein which uh, if you're not familiar with, it's, a, it's one of the inflammatory markers. I actually already made a video about that. So I will put a card up here if you need to um, learn more about that. But there are many people, myself included, who have completely normal C-reactive protein all the time and still have active disease. So um, in fact, it's actually possible for all of your inflammatory markers to be completely normal and you still have active disease. That was my case with myself. And um, I believe I had shared that in my video that I shared about like how I got diagnosed um, along with the labs, but the main labs that popped up for me was rheumatoid factor initially. And some people, they have it and that doesn't even come up with anything. Sometimes like all the labs are totally normal. So um, those are the four points for these, for this like first criteria. So one or fewer swollen joints, one or fewer tender joints, a patient assessment on a zero to 10 scale that their arthritis activity is one or less, or a blood test with little or no uh, inflammation as far as like your C-reactive protein, um, which again, like you could meet this criteria and still have active disease. You know what I'm saying? So
So the second definition, uh, according to this article, is using what is called the Simplified Disease Activity Index to measure disease activity. And I'll include a link here in the description so you guys can check that out. But it's basically consists of a kind of like a, a, a cumulative score of the four things that I talked about, like from the first definition, in addition to a physician's assessment. So it basically goes over like the tenderness and swollenness of like the various different joints from the left side and the right side. And there's like a tally that you get to say like how well you're doing, like zero is very well, 10 very poor, you know, um, things like that. And there's like a score interpretation box that can be used basically in addition to that physician assessment. Um, and so that's another way that uh, remission could be defined. I tend to go by my baseline, if that makes sense, and experience. So like when you have like chronic pain and fatigue and things like that, or really any medical condition, you start to get a pretty good idea of what your baseline is. And when you are like if your symptom baseline is like more intense than, you know, your baseline, then that's usually how I personally can tell I'm in a flare. So like, say, say for example, my pain level baseline in my hand is like a four out of 10. Like that's just like my baseline. It'll go up and down and fluctuate, but like the general like baseline is at a four. So if my pain is like at an eight and it's staying that way, that, that's more aggressive than my baseline. You know, perhaps I'm in a flare and that would be something I'd like to talk to my doctor with versus if my baseline is usually a four and it is starting to be more like a two or a one, or I'm not having any pain at all. And it's going for extended periods of time. So I'm not talking just like a couple hours after taking some pain medication, you know, or just a couple of days, like weeks at a time, maybe months, um, then I would personally consider that to be more of a remission. And I would talk to my doctor about that. So what I suggest is really looking at what remission means to you like what that is defined as for you. Cause for some people it could be no pain at all. Um, and for some people that might be a little bit different, like maybe a baseline of a two or for some people it might just be, I can function better, <laughs> you know, like that, that was, that was a big one for me. It was just being able to function. Um, and I invite you to have this conversation with your rheumatologist too, because you might be considering remission for yourself to look a certain way. And then you go and talk to your rheumatologist and they might have a different criteria. And uh, it's, it's easier to, uh, if, you, if you both know what like each other's version of remission looks like for you, it's easier to have like, I think more productive conversations and be able to uh, lower the miscommunication in terms of feedback. Because I've had those like, I've had those times where I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm doing well for my standards, you know, like for what it looks like for me. And then I go and talk to the provider and they may have a totally different criteria, you know, like for you know, for me, it could be, hey, I'm functioning. And for them, they might be looking for a specific like pain score, just as an example, you know. So I invite you to have that discussion with your provider. Um, so that way you guys can work together as a team. I'm trying to think, I believe that covers just about everything. 
So in a nutshell, there are multiple definitions of remission and criteria. You could meet that criteria and still have very active rheumatoid arthritis, you know, depending on your experience. Um, so I invite you to experience, to uh, explore what that is for yourself and share it in the comments below. Be nice to see. And I think it would help a lot of other people out who are like, I have no idea, you know, give them something to, um, an idea to explore, see if it resonates with them. So with that, I will see you guys in another video. Bye.